Hello everybody and welcome back to another Yes Epic Yes video. Somehow I absolutely completely forgot to record the intro on this video so my apologies that's why it is here. Today we are going to be doing a review on a spotlight camera. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into the video because this is actually quite an interesting one. We're going to start here with a complete unboxing of a product that was sent to us by, I believe it's Weenies is how you pronounce this. Um, apologies if that is not correct, but Weenies is how I'm uh, pronouncing it. This here is a um, spotlight camera with a AI controlling feature, which I'm very interested to see what that is. Now, this is not going to be put outdoors. I am going to be putting this indoors just because that's where I need it at this point in time. Um, my room is particularly long and it has two sets of lights. I have the LED strips, which are in this room, which I can control via voice control. And then I have the normal bulb lights and they cannot be controlled by anything other than the light switch. And the only light switch is right at the end of my room. So this first start will allow light to be cast when I need to go downstairs during the middle of the night, say for a bathroom break or food or something like that. And as well as that, if anybody is coming up to my room, I'll then be able to be able to see them through this, um, either via the light outside or I believe that this has a phone control. Um, two way audio alarm alert yes i am in fact correct i'm not doubting myself too much <laughs> this has phone control so this is going to be really great for knowing when people are coming up to my room i can make sure that you know i don't have any mess around or if i have people over and anything's happening i need to make sure that people are there this is great for that so make up your own mind on what i'm talking about <laughs> but i'm sure you catch my gist um Let's go ahead here and just unbox this. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to unbox this product. And from there, I'm then going to set it up and I'm going to show you the setup and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'm going to finalize with a few thoughts. So I hope that that makes sense. So opening it up brand new out of box, we've got a recyclable cardboard, which I quite like. This stuff is great, much better than your um, foam packaging. I'm going to get that out of the way there and put this back in frame. So we've got ourselves an instruction manual. That's going to be all the usual stuff. I'll have a read through that in my own time if I need to. This here then is a thank you for choosing our products. You now have 24 months of a manufacturer warranty. Oh, okay. Well, that's gone. I'll get that back in a second, but that's nice to know. So you get a two year manufacturer warranty with this. Now, obviously that doesn't include things like you bumping into it and it cracking or, you know, yanking the thing off the wall. But if anything happened to go wrong with the camera, that was the manufacturer's fault. It's nice to have that. So this here is then our system. Just taking the bag off. We've got a protective film on the front. This does in fact turn. And then we've got a base plate here, which is mounted in some way. It almost looks like that comes off. I would have assumed there might be screws in there or something. Yeah, we've got a screw right there. So I'd imagine that with that screw that might come off. And um, that then goes into one of those bad boys. You'll see these very commonly on most cameras. Um, I'm not 100% sure why, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know enough about them to know why, but I just know that most of these cameras have a um, connection point actually on the cable, which I think is a great, a great idea. Um, it means that, for example, if, say, you have this camera set up in a difficult spot to unplug, you can have, say, midway joining points that you can just disconnect and connect when needs be. And then, so our arrows are pointing this way. So assume it's like that. So that goes in there and turns, right? Arrows are there. I'm turning it. Uh, that's not quite working. What's going on? It looks like it has places to move, but it doesn't look like it wants to. Okay, and this one's saying turn this way. Oh, okay, so so this arrow here has an, uh, sorry, this arrow here has an arrow going this way with the points meeting and an arrow going this way, which I would have assumed meant that these were turned this way, but that is not happening at all. And it looks like it should. It looks like it should. It looks like it should turn this way. 
So maybe it's just my fingers. <laughs> maybe my fingers are just not quite... I don't know what's... Oh, oh, I think we got movement there. Yeah, we did. Okay, we got movement there. And that's it, pretty much locked. Okay, so that is a very, very tight seal. I would assume that that might have something to do with the fact that it's meant to be outdoors. I assume that it's that tough because it's meant to be water sealed. Um, and then this is going to be in your... Uh, say port covered so if you do do this outdoors you want to make sure that this is covered um, because these are common points that water can get in um, so you want to make sure now in fairness this thing does look pretty well sealed so I'll have a read of the instruction manual and figure out where I'm going from there but I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up now and I will walk you through that entire process as we go um, this is very interesting what are you Ah, okay. SD card backup. Very nice. With a big, big, big grommet for water sealing. Very, very nice. Okay, so that's your that's your storage. But I do believe that this is a um, internet protocol camera. This 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 does work over uh, local access networks, I believe. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set this up, and I'll be back to you then. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, if I go ahead and set up my mounting bracket, so this will be the top, that has to line up with the top of the camera, which would be like that. So that would be correct. So what I'm thinking is, if I just put that at a random at the same height there, I don't know just how much that's going to be able to see. I mean, it'll see the door open and close, but I was looking to try and get a little bit more. This is no fault of the camera, though. This is my setup. <laughs> um, the only other way I could see doing it would be if I mounted the camera on the wall beside the stairs and then angled it in the right direction. So if I say my wall is here, if I mounted this, say, like that, I could potentially mount the camera like that which once again comes down to the re-imaging part of this. I haven't yet set this up in the app. I'm going to do it as per the instructions, and as per the instructions, I believe it says set it up first. So apologies if that is incorrect, but from what I've read, it says mount it first and then set it up, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it's how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> um, yeah. There's also the fact that the walls that I'd be mounting it on wouldn't be solid walls. Like, this is wood, it's not solid, but it is, you've got, you've got a decent bit of hard material, whereas plasterboard is not going to be able to hold the same amount. It's not heavy, it's not heavy at all, but considering the fact that I just don't quite know how much those plasterboards can take, I would prefer mounting it away from them. So I need to decide how I do this. The other option would be would be that I I also need the power port. I need the power outlet, of course. So mounting it closer to to this area here that I'm looking at is probably better. Sorry for getting so close. Hello. <laughs> um, mounting it where I have it is probably going to be better. Hmm. This can be edited down. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna mount it to this area here. I don't know if it's the absolute best move, but I think that it's the best considering my setup. So additionally, they also give you a reset pin, which is that little circular item there, wall plugs and screws. Now, because I'm screwing into woods, I don't, I, I'm not gonna need the wall plugs, but I do need the screws. So let's go ahead and get these out. They're pretty long, they're pretty long screws, which makes a lot of sense. Um, your mounting bracket is not an over and under, it's a side to side. So this will be the top of where you're mounting. The cable will come out here, so the camera will be out and up like this. So it's side to side of the camera rather than top to bottom, which is better for weight distribution. Really like that because a lot of them do top and bottom and you're putting in your top screw and then your bottom screw is just not doing anything. It's just keeping its position. Whereas this is actually going to take weight distribution, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm, uh, this is not a particularly um, important setup, if that makes sense. Like I'm not doing this for a surveillance system. This is just my home. I would just like to be able to see people coming up and down my stairs. 
I'm gonna be able to get some spotlight when I'm going down my stairs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and free eye this, and I'm thinking that right about there, we'll have it in the middle there, and that should give enough room off top. Yeah, I believe that that should give enough room off top. I'm not really able to very easily, um, let's see here. I'm not able to very easily, how does this mounting bracket work? <laughs> okay, so that goes through that way, which means I'm putting in the screws the wrong way, correct? Yes, so the screws need to go in this way, which then means, okay, sorry, I'm just getting this right in my head. So I need to be able to line this up and that goes lined up like so, which means the camera will be like this. I'm afraid I'm just simply, because of where I'm installing this, it is very, very difficult to get an angle that you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, but I want it like this. So I want to set up my thing like so. Because this is just wood, once again, I'll be able to just screw through this, and there goes my screw. Lovely. All right, I'll have to go and grab that from behind my table, but we can go ahead and start with the first one so we keep our alignment. So I'm thinking that that there should give me enough room. Let's just, yeah, that'll give me plenty of room. I can actually, I want to go as high as possible, so I try and get as much of the stairs as possible, if that makes sense. Um, so that's where I'm gonna go with that. Let's hope that the magnetic end of my screwdriver works this time. We'll put that in there. That can just freely move because it doesn't matter. I've got it in position. And pure arm strength from this point onwards. Let's get a pilot hole running just by screwing it lightly. Like so. And then we can start putting in some strength behind that. And there we go. Okay, we've got a grip. Now it's just about keeping it straight and bringing it the rest of the way. These are really, 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 really overkill screws, I think, for the setup that we have here. And like These screws are about yay long <laughs> and way thicker than they need to be for, for what I'm doing. Um, but if you're doing this outdoors where there's going to be wind and that kind of thing, if you can put it into a concrete wall with wall plugs in it, that, that baby's gonna stay there. That's that's why these screws are as large as they are. So if you have different purposes and you can get the exact same screw type, obviously it's not recommended, but I don't see why you couldn't, provided that they were strong enough to hold the camera. I'm gonna need an impact driver for this because I'm starting to struggle getting through that last piece of wood. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install the bracket. I'm gonna get the camera up and I will be back to you once it is actually mounted. Okay, so as you can see, now our mounting bracket is in fact installed. Had to completely move a desk, which you can't currently see, which is why this is offset. Um, but that's now our mounting bracket set up. And installing the camera should simply be as easy as taking our safety screw, which I will keep a hold of and not drop like the other one. Excuse me, have to get in here. And then putting this item up like so nice that feels good and tight in there and then let's go ahead and get our screwdriver and our piece make sure we're threading it in correctly nicely done that's us at the end of our travel make sure everything's clicked in okay another click so we'll go again perfect and that there is in fact our camera set up. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, it's not. If I'd got a, a, a level out and gone, you know, super duper intense with it, I could have got the thing perfectly straight. I don't need that. I'm making up a phone, uh, a home system, should I say. So that is now our camera installed per se. Now we've got to go ahead and plug it in. So I'm going to go ahead and move this uh, filing cabinet over. Uh, like so, something fell. <laughs> Let's move our table back in, which you probably can't see. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up here. Let me go ahead and just make sure that I'm uh, correctly focused in. So just give me a second here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and unwrap our wire because I'm gonna do a small bit of cable management on it. Now I'm lucky enough that I have a table sitting just underneath this, so I can actually just kind of throw all this down. <laughs> I probably should do it better, but to be honest with you, 
this is this this entire system over here it below it is actually a cctv system as i was saying earlier on the front of our house and um, we've got a few cameras set up around the place so the cctv system is right below it which means that it's just wire spaghetti already by whoever put it in so i'm not going to go and bother trying and fixing all of that right now I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that this cable is straight. Of course, it wouldn't matter how long it's been sitting there, it will always tangle itself up because the universe likes to mess with you in that way. And there we go. Very, very long cable on this. Really, really long cable. Uh, because not only do I have all of this, I additionally have all of this, which I won't be using a centimeter of. Um, let's go ahead and get our connection in here. Perfect. Uh, arrows to arrows, twisty wisty, good enough. Let's go ahead and put all of these cables back behind our desk there, like so. Sorry that you can't see that. And let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so we've instantly got a light up. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this protective screen that it has. Uh, there's a tag right there. Ooh, that was satisfying. Okay. <laughs> Let's see now. Okay, so from here, I need to go ahead and set it up in the app, which is in the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a screen recording and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay, so having moved over now to the phone, what you wanna do is download this AI.app. Once you go into this, you'll be put through an account creation, which I've gone ahead and done off camera just for privacy sake, and I've left it exactly where it is. So, find support and customer service to help with your products, including troubleshooting. Okay, add a device. That's what we're going to be doing first. Keep your devices organized by creating, by creating rooms and assigning devices to rooms. And then there's a community area. Okay, well, let's go ahead and manage our rooms here because this is not a living room. We're going to go ahead and rename this to Morgan's uh, room. Morgan's, yeah, Morgan's room. Perfect. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we can add a device to this. So we're going to be in surveillance. And we have got ourselves the F1. Yes. Correct. So, when permission is granted, the privacy... Okay, so we need to... Waiting for Wi-Fi? Sorry. So, this is slightly different to what the instructions are giving me. So, we'll go ahead and scan the QR code on your device. Um, add manually? No. Switch flashlight on. So, we are the F1. That's correct. Go to settings while using the app and then ah okay here's where we can scan our qr code so the qr code this is really weird is there uh okay so our qr code might be on the actual device then does that all right let's go down to our device and go ahead and scan and see if there's a qr code on the device i'm basically just bringing you through the entire setup process here so apologies if it seems a little bit askew but i want you guys to get a proper idea of what it's like to essentially install one of these cameras ah okay so if i go back into this you guys should be able to see a camera view if you sorry for it being so stretched looking like vladimir putin <laughs> This QR code, I would assume. Whoa, my goodness. Hello. I'm assuming it's that. Ah, okay. Yes, it is. So there's a QR code on the back of the device. You can spin the device around. Doesn't mind that. And you can scan that. So the green light is flashing on my device. I'll give it precise access. I'll go ahead and give it this. Uh, editor, please make sure that this is blurred. Okay, and now it's searching for the device. So you have to confirm, yep, there we go. That's a specific internet network that you can join on. So we'll go ahead and join on that, which is then going to connect me through and hopefully set up its network to the actual internet, the Wi-Fi network that I have here. Uh, yes. Successful. Okay, you probably just heard that. The camera is now speaking to me. So adding procedure successful. You'll go to a monitoring area. Okay, and then there's an...
reason, the camera had to go through an update, and going through that update disabled the recording. So, <laughs> anyways, we are here. Hello. <laughs> um, please don't mind the mess of my room over here. It's a work in progress. I'm doing a complete revamp. It's just taken a while. Um, but we can go ahead here and set up some pretty cool stuff. So I tried to do this last time and then realized that the detection wasn't working. But we can set an activity zone, which essentially means we can add a box here that says if there is any movement within this specific zone, the camera will turn on, which means that I can set if I, this area of the box here is my door, which means that going downstairs, it should turn on the light. And then this area over here being my stairs means that I should be able to see people coming up and down. So let's go ahead and try and save that. Save successfully. Wonderful. And then person detection. So we've got a whole load of different detection types here. Sensitivity, turn in a big action, low sensitivity, Okay, so we'll turn that up just a little bit. And then what I want is routines. So let's see if a routine will happen here. Um, maybe automation. When any condition is triggered on the device here. So when there is camera motion, uh, motion detection of any kind, I don't mind what because I'm the only person in this room. If this device detects motion, then I want you to, hmm, okay. Let's just see here. If I go ahead and turn off my lights, and then, so we're now going to go back to the camera, and I'm going to show you what it's like in nighttime mode. Oh, this is actually pretty good. This almost, this almost shows more than what it actually shows normally. However, what I want is I want this light, this light, I want that to turn on automatically. So let's go ahead here and see if we can set that up. So events, maybe? No. It is a spotlight camera, so I'm sure there has to be a way to do it. Light settings. Ah, when someone appears at night, automatic light on, and I want that light on for a while. And then I want it at ultimate brightness. Ah, okay, there we go. That's just worked on my end here. So now, it sees me, and so it has turned on the light. So if I go ahead and just walk back out over here, the flies, of course, are now all going to the light. I'm seeing dust on me that isn't even there. So this will stay on for a minute and a half. So that motion detection is now working, which is really, really great. So if it detects me, it's going to turn on a light. Sorry about the fly flying in front, but this is a really, really nifty way of setting things up. So if I now move, if I move, that's the light now on. Yes, that's the light now on. Okay, that's really, really cool. So that what that would essentially mean is, let's say I go downstairs, I leave my room over here, it detects the motion within my room, then will detect my motion coming up the stairs again. So when I leave my room to go and say use the bathroom, the light will come on. Then when I'm coming back from the bathroom because I'm opening that door down there, which is within the activity zone, the light should also then turn back on, which is a really, really nice function. And gosh, do I look terrible at this angle. Hello. <laughs> so overall, the video quality on this is not bad at all. Like, it's not going to be 4K, 60 FPS, 10 bit. Nobody's expecting it to be amazing. But you can very, very clearly see what is going on inside of this room, which I hate because it's a mess. <laughs> but you can very, very clearly see what's going on inside this room. The setup process is relatively easy. The app is, it's all right. Um, I think if there was any area of this that I was going to change at all, it'd be the app. Some of it's just a little bit... <sighs> It's a little bit sh shuddery, if that makes sense. Like, it it works, and it does everything you're wanting it to do. It's just, for example, when the software update was happening and the recording stopped, I was in the middle of trying to set up an activity zone, and because it was going through that update, it couldn't set up the activity zone. So the app just kind of froze, which I don't like particularly, but it's also very, very common with these kind of apps. It seems like they're basically just copy and pasting one another. Oh, hello. 
So let's see just how much motion it takes here. Not a lot. Honestly, not a lot. I think it's also using that AI to detect actual human faces, which my phone screen will be helping with. Um, but if there was anything that I was going to improve on, it's the app. Also, through the registration process, I resize the app to go and get, because I'm using a full phone, as you can see by the by this, as well as the actual display that you're currently seeing. Um, I dragged and dropped my Google Mail, a Gmail app over, which would then split the screen usually between two apps. And that completely reset my registration process, which means that I have to go back in and redo it. Now, it's not a huge deal. It's just, it's very small things like that. Being able to go out of the app and go back in and still have the option to put in your verification code without having to specifically go through a whole load of steps would be a nice feature if we could add that. Um, but overall, the, the camera itself is really, really nice. It's really, really nice. For the quality and for the price, I think that you are getting a really, really good camera. You've also got all of your different options. You've got record, you've got screenshots, speaking, which means that if somebody was to come up my stairs and say, I didn't want them to come in because I was in the middle of changing, let's say, I could just speak and say, hey, just give me two minutes, I'll be out in a second. Now, I know that, for example, it, it's not a big deal in this room because it's not terribly far, but if you're using this on a commercial basis or something like that, it's going to be really, really handy. I am so sorry for the flies. There's, there is only two of them, but it looks like there's 20. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a really, really great product for the price that they're asking and for the quality. I mean, this mounting system is really, really easy. If I now want to move this camera and if it's not blinding me, <laughs> um, I can go ahead and just do that. That's no problem. So overall, I got to give this a really, really good mark. And um, thank you for sending the product. It's helped me a lot with my home setup. Hopefully I can get things a little bit clearer in here the next time that you guys are seeing this. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really great products. Make sure to go and check it out in the link below. Thank you very much for sending it for us. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do consider giving a like. Let us know what your thoughts are down in the comments around this whole thing. I mean, would this be something that you consider buying? Let us know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. And if you are new, do subscribe. Stay safe, everyone, and goodbye.